I okay. think you ought to insist. I think you ought to insist that Sam show his face. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and get started here. Good to see everyone coming in. I think we got a lot of people here that will continue to file in here for us today. Uh, today is the season finale, I guess you could call that here of uh, this season, season number three. Um, and what we focused on for the most part here in this season has been um, preparing umpires for the upcoming season. And obviously, we took a look a lot at uh, what we what we can do physically and mentally in our first episode, and then we've expanded upon that one really to kind of focus on how many of us in positions of leadership can build an umpire program. So uh, that's what we'll kind of continue our conversation with here today. Uh, last week, we took a lot of time to take a look specifically uh, at um, recruiting umpires. We had Dalton Rose, uh, former USMC recruiter, uh, with us to kind of give us some, his, some of his insights on recruiting. And then today, we'll kind of turn the page more so to both retaining and developing those umpires. So that is uh, what our focal point then here is for us today. Now, I got a couple announcements here before I go ahead and um, get into things here for us. Uh, just three real quick ones here for me. First of all, um, there are new clinics that have been loaded into the umpire registry. Uh, so if you guys have not logged in in the last week or so, the rules clinics that'll start in February, like uh, late February, February 21st, I think it's the first clinic. Uh, those will all dive into the rules of the game and that'll take us all the way through middle of April to get through. They're gonna break it down uh, rule by rule. Uh, the West is leading that stuff, but at the same time, we're going to have uh, instructors from a variety of different regions there too. So pretty excited to see a, a collaborative approach um, and a use there to go ahead and go through the rules. So uh, be on the lookout for that in the umpire registry if you've not caught wind of that one. Secondly, and I dropped this one in the chat, if you scroll all the way up into the chat, uh, there is a, a really good series going on uh, starting tonight through West Coast Umpire uh, Camps. Um, there's a, a link in the chat for those. It is a virtual camp. It's free of charge, um, and it's three days. It'll start tonight. It's all on West Coast time, so just be careful of that if you're not on West Coast time. Uh, but it, it'll go tonight, tomorrow, and then Sunday. Uh, they'll go ahead and wrap up a bunch of different topics, a bunch of different speakers. I think they'll actually have Danny Proenza on, who talks a lot about mental and physical health for umpires. Uh, so that clinic registration is available for you in the top of the chat. Go ahead and find that one if you'd like. And if you're interested, uh, go ahead and, and get into that one to go on. So uh, that'll be in good shape there. Um, the last thing then here that I've got for us announcement wise is that today, as I mentioned here at the start of things is our, our, our season finale here. Um, we'll talk about that stuff here in just a second. We'll take a brief break for about a week or two and I'll make that decision, that announcement uh, kind of later on here over the weekend and things like that. Uh, but we will start seeing season four in February. We'll either start that one um, the second week in February or the third week in February. It'll just kind of depend uh, on what exactly uh, we see come about. So um, be on the lookout for that information. And our topic will mirror what exactly Little League is going to do with their virtual clinics. And we'll get into a rule study as well. Uh, and what we'll do is probably take a look at uh, from our, from our, um, uh, survey that we sent out uh, towards the holidays. Uh, there were really five categories that people were most interested in in rules, uh, appeals, awards, um, interference, obstruction, and then batting out of turn. So those uh, are some um, key points here that we're trying to put together. And uh, we're, we're working on that one and, and hopefully having that one out. But that'll be our next season. That season will begin then in February. So those are the announcements I've got here. New clinics on the umpire registry, West Coast Umpire Camp this weekend. That's available for you in the chat, that link. And then lastly, three up, three down. Uh, we'll go ahead and um, uh, pick back up sometime in February. And then what we'll focus on then is a rules study. So all that stuff is upcoming to us. All right. OK, so today let's go ahead. I, I, hey, Stu, can I interrupt you a minute real quick? Yeah, go ahead, Tom. Absolutely. Yeah. For anyone who's interested uh, for the, the rules clinic that Stu was talking about that Little League is doing, uh, a mass email campaign will get launched on February the 14th. And of course, anyone who is already in the umpire registry will receive that email. And there should be embedded links to allow you to register right from that email. So come about February 15th. If you haven't seen that email with the links, uh, reach out to me and I'll make sure we get you hooked up. Thanks, Lou. All right. No problem, Tom. Thanks for jumping in there. I've, I've switched, my, um, I've switched my, my view so I couldn't see you in there. So thanks, Tom. 
All right, guys. Well, I'm excited here to go ahead and get into the bulk of the conversation here for us today. Um, and, and that will focus, like I said here, on continuing to build your umpire program with emphasis then specifically on uh, developing and retaining our umpires. And for the most part, there's a specific demographic that I want to focus our conversation on. Uh, and that is like our age outs. I think a lot of our programs throughout Little League and the organization do a really good job of recruiting and using junior umpires. Uh, but at the same time, once they hit graduation, about the ages of 17 or 18, uh, or even if they graduate college, uh, what ends up happening is, is obviously they find other things in life to go ahead and do. Uh, and, and I think our target may not necessarily need to be junior umpires because we continue to do that uh, pretty well. And we still need to, to maintain that focus. But at the same time, how exactly can we retain those individuals who are essentially going to age out and, and go into basically life? How do we keep them essentially hooked uh, in addition to developing and, re and, and retaining uh, talent and, and umpires in general? So that is the focal point here for us today. Uh, if you take a look here in the chat before we get going, there's a bunch of resources up there for you, and I'll get to those here. I linked them for you, George, as uh, PDFs. So those are all files here for you to go ahead and use. Some of the things that I used when I was a local league UIC and a local um, uh, District UIC, just to kind of share with you, and I'll talk about those here as we get through uh, the, the, the conversation here for us today. Now, also in the chat is a question here that I want to lead off with, and, and I want you to start to think about these things, and then as you come up with an answer, uh, you can drop some of these things into the chat. Uh, so the discussion question that I've got out there for us, uh, it centers around uh, developing and retaining umpires. And very simply, I want you to think back upon your, uh, your, your organizations and, and just think, what are some of the best ways? What are some of the best ways we can retain our umpires? So think about strategies, think about things that you do, uh, and just kind of start to make a list. And you can populate the chat here with that stuff uh, so that we can go ahead and get ready to prepare uh, for our conversation today. So uh, that discussion, is uh, discussion question is linked in the chat. Go ahead and give us an answer there to us. Uh, and that question, again, what are some of the best ways um, we can go ahead then uh, and um, retain our umpires? What exactly are some of the best ways we can uh, retain umpires? You can drop that one then into the chat here uh, for us. Now, as those questions are, are be, as that question is being answered, there's a couple things here that I want to go through here uh, with us and uh, really just kind of want to recap the season here uh, just so that we can kind of put back into our minds uh, what exactly we have um, covered here so far this season. So uh, let me go ahead and, and share screen and get things up here for us. Uh, just very briefly here so that everybody can kind of refresh their memories on uh, where exactly we've been as the PowerPoint goes ahead and loads. Uh, very quickly, the first episode, if you remember this one, preparing mentally and physically for the season. Uh, we focused on these three different ideas here and, 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 and conditioning and strength and, 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 um, uh, and just agility and nutrition, all those different things there. I remember, don't hit the panic button. Uh, you can't get all your gains all done in once. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still going strong here in my individual journey. I'm week four where I haven't missed a workout just yet. So hopefully a lot of us are, are, are on the same plan. Same plan can't be used for everyone. And then you got to find balance in your life. Make sure that you can do what you can do. Uh, and, and that then is obviously making sure that you get to a point physically where you don't have to huff and puff and recover from one point to the other. Mentally, remember I proposed the question, like what are some of the things that you wanna focus on getting better upon? So continue to reflect upon that. Number one, how exactly are you preparing physically for the season? And secondly, mentally, what are some things that you specifically wanna get better at here this season? Uh, and how exactly are you gonna get better at that? So that's kind of where we focused our most of our um, uh, focal points then in the first episode. Second episode, uh, we focused on building culture. We talked about getting yourself right, making sure that we were uh, good with our expectations and how exactly were we going to build trust uh, with our, our mentality, our mindset, and as a leader. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we could understand why people got involved. If you remember, we asked the question, why did you get involved and how did you stay involved? Uh, and essentially what those answers boiled down to is number one, it was fun. Secondly, you guys love the game and you love the relationships. And then lastly, you love the growth part of it too, the, the science behind it, if you will. Pete Tarnapal mentioned that one here, uh, the challenge of getting better there. Uh, so as we build our umpire programs and our culture, some things to then uh, obviously keep in mind here. Creating opportunities for those you lead. We, we focused a lot of our conversations on creating opportunities for those that we lead in terms of uh, you know who's getting to work the big games. And I think that's important, but also think about what other leadership opportunities you may have 
have in your program that you can pass along to other people. So it's not just restricted to games. It's also then uh, what leadership roles do you have in your, in, your, in your organization that you can probably start to extend or delegate to other people as well. Successful programs are built and sustained through intentionally developing genuine relationships. We've all talked and attested to that's one of the number one reasons uh, why all of us then really love Little League and stay with Little League. So keep that in mind here. And, and the most effective cultures, as we mentioned here and a lot of feedback over the last couple of weeks, center around appreciation and expression of that appreciation, inclusion uh, that we're going to go ahead and bring along everybody, and then resiliency that the people are supported and ready then uh, to overcome setbacks. And then lastly, this idea of meritocracy, which we'll talk a little bit about today here. Uh, who you promote is what you promote. I'll say that again. Who you promote is what you promote and using um, analytics to basically go ahead and prove that meritocracy and how that can be used to foster relationships. And we'll dive into that one a little bit more so uh, here uh, again today. The last then topic of conversation from last week in episode three uh, was from Dalton Rose. He gave us seven points, at least that's what I took in, in my notes, uh, some of the different ideas here from him about recruiting umpires and some things to keep in mind. And he definitely went over some uh, important strategies, yes, uh, but at the same time here, he gave some big ticket items. You can kind of see those listed here on the screen for you. And, and I'll share this PowerPoint eventually for you guys and, and with all these resources as well um, as we get through. Um, stuff here today and through the rest of the season. But uh, some really good points there that we've talked about throughout the course of this season. And I just wanted to refresh everybody's memory and kind of show you the, the progress uh, and the nature and, and the developments of conversations here that we've had. Now, lastly here, uh, continue to think about not only how exactly are you preparing yourself physically for the season, but mentally, two to three things you plan on intentionally improving this season. And I think those can be things that you can do, yes, on the field, but in positions of leadership, some of the things that we can do here to change or revise some of the things that we also then do uh, as leaders in our organizations as well. Uh, so just wanted to kind of bring everybody up to speed and refresh everybody's memory then uh, on some of those things here that we've covered thus far. Now, I'm going to go back to the question here that I, that I posed here, first off and foremost, and that was, how exactly do we retain umpires? What are some ways that we retain umpires? And many of you guys have started to answer those questions uh, into the chat. And before we go ahead and, 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 and peel back the, the onion, so to speak, on those questions and on those answers, I think there are two different types of answers here. And, and this is kind of where I want to center and kind of pivot and focus on a lot of the things that we'll talk about today is I think in our umpire programs, uh, a lot of times with development opportunities and retention opportunities, we either have transactional opportunities or a transactional approach versus then a transformational approach. And there's a significant difference between the two, transactional versus transformational. Now, I'm not saying that you have to have one over the other. But I do think that we have to understand how they both play off of one another as well. And while I don't think you can emphasize one over the other, at the same time, you cannot just have one of those approaches uh, to essentially then try to motivate people, to keep them in your program and things like that. So um, let's continue to think about here. I've got a bunch of things about these ideas uh, that's there, uh, that, that we see there on, into the chat here specifically. And um, I see everybody li listing those here too. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and kind of the activity that I wanna do here is this. I'll go ahead and share my screen. It'll make sense here uh, once I get it up here for us. But I'll share this one here, um, and let me go ahead and get to the right page. All right, so what I want to do is take a look at the um, suggestions in the chat for how exactly we can uh, keep our, 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 um, our umpires, uh, keep people involved. And again, continue to think about that age out group, right? That, that age uh, of like 16 to 18, uh, maybe 22 to 25. How do we keep them? Uh, so everybody can take a look here at the chat, uh, and I want us to go ahead and think about which ones would we classify as transactional strategies, and which one would we, would we classify as transformational strategies? So I'm um, get ready to have that discussion here in just a second. So everybody take a look at the chat and then start to think, which are transactional, which are transformational? Now, what do I mean by transactional? Well, basically transaction, just as you would go to the store, if you want an object, you pay money for it, and in exchange, you get that object. Uh, so things I think like equipment, for example, are a transactional strategy. Transformational strategies are kind of more of those big ticket items, probably a little bit more less, a little bit less tangible, if you will, uh, more so along the relationship side of things here too. So let's take a look here at the chat and think about some of these strategies. Uh, let's first try and figure out uh, some of the transactional strategies. So take a look at the chat. What are some examples of transactional strategies? And anyone uh, can go ahead and, and just go ahead and, and start to list uh, or, or call out on some of these. What are some of the transactional strategies that we see appearing in the chat? 
But Stu, you got the, uh, I put it down there, the free equipment for yes. a minimum number of games, definitely transactional. Yep. And I think, and as I mentioned here, um, I think here that this is a really important thing for us to do because it will also help us to build those programs. Realistically, we are a grassroots organization. So free equipment for uh, a certain number of games is absolutely a transactional strategy. Good. What are some other transactional strategies that you can think of or that you have seen appear in the chat? I don't see it in the chat, but, uh, you know, lunch, uh, burgers, something like that after the games. Yeah, absolutely. We'll call them. Uh, that was, yeah, that was yeah. big when I first started, right? That was important. Yeah, concession rewards. So uh, that's yeah. basically pop, water, hot dog, all that kind of stuff. And I think what this basically does is, uh, and, and we can't make, and, we, and this I think is really important, is that we've got to use these transactional items as like tokens of appreciation. So they can't just be given it and that's it. Like we've got to make sure that we have an expression of appreciation there uh, all at the same time. Keep thinking here, what are some other transactional strategies that we may be able to use to retain our talent? Hey, Stu, I'll, I'll, I'll chime in. Um, maybe, maybe another one might be in a big win-win um, strategy would be to uh, pay for educational opportunities, uh, be it be it within Little League, and there are a ton of those. Or like you said, the the West West Coast uh, umpire camp type thing. So um, you know, fun educational. Yeah. So essentially, here what we're talking about then are like scholarships uh, to umpire school. Uh, umpire school or basically like um, regional clinics. I think that's really good here too. Um, yeah, and I think Stu, that's kind of transformational as well. I think it's a little combination of both um, be, because it, 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 it really is gonna make them better at what they do. So it's almost development, right? Yeah, um, so absolutely here, I, I, I would agree. And, that, and Tony, you took like uh, the bait here. I was getting ready to say, what, could we think about that as transformational? And uh, absolutely, I, I had a league do that for me. Huber Heights literally sponsored my, um, when in 2004, I was 16 years old and went to the Central Region Umpire School and they sponsored everything there uh, for me to, to go ahead and get there. And that meant a lot. And uh, as a result, then I, I saw that as an investment in me. Uh, it was something that, that I had my sights on and I thought was absolutely awesome. Um, and, and therefore that kind of motivated me uh, to not only pursue education, my own development, but also then to use that when I came back uh, and continue to improve as an umpire. So absolutely there, Tony. Um, continue to think about here now, and let's not just restrict ourselves to transactional here now too. Let's, let's just think about strategies in general and then we can classify in there. What other strategies might we have to help us retain talent? What other strategies might we have to retain talent? Well, it, I think for, when you think of that, it's um, putting, getting them into bigger games uh, could be one of those things, right? Do you, do you want to work a, uh, a, a district tournament or a, um, you know, sectional state? Um, and, and I think rewarding them with recommendations like that is definitely transformational. Yes, absolutely. Because that generally comes out of a product of relationship over time that was fostered yeah. and generated. So I'm going to call them promotions here, uh, specifically yeah, yeah. to like tournaments and then even within organizations. So some of us, for example, may be a district UIC, you have an assistant UIC, maybe you have a secretary and like a treasurer or something like that in your umpire program. So those could be great ways then uh, to uh, to promote individuals and, and definitely express, um, you know, gratitude and appreciation, yet still recognition for their own growth. Definitely transformational there, too. And those promotions, I think, could be within the, the individual leagues as well, going from, let's say, um, you know, low minor to minor to majors, uh, you know, <laughs> to 50, 70, et cetera. Absolutely. Um, what other ideas? I, I don't have the chat up in front of me here. So if, if somebody could just kind of keep me updated there in terms of what's going on in the chat and uh, just, you know, what we see there. What, what exactly, what else do we have here strategies wise for retaining and, uh, and developing our talent? Dude, Mike Johnson just said, uh, have an award for rookie umpire of the year, something similar presented at a year in group setting. Um, or I, I know we talked about barbecues, so um, recognition. Yes, uh, end of season 
events. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, and again, those are all relationship building. And I think we, we kind of get the picture here. Transactional, it's kind of more to the individual. And I think we definitely need those expressions of appreciation. And I think that's the biggest thing here with our transactional strategies. They can't just be like, you know, that, that, um, that, that meaningless transaction that we have uh, when we buy groceries. Like we don't really care about the cashier. Um, but when we are developing people and trying to retain people, that transaction is an opportunity for us to express express appreciation for recognizing growth and development. And therefore that which is transactional can also become transformational. And I think those two definitely work hand in hand, but I think we get the, the direction I wanted to go here. And that was the fact then uh, that we really need to focus on the transformational. And that then is relationship building. How can we then express our gratitude, those different strategies, uh, really with those transactional strategies to express appreciation, care, and things like that. Now, the last thing that I'm going to go ahead and throw into the deck. I'd even tried to uh, organize. My plan was last year to organize a trip to either Major League, uh, AAA, or Division One baseball game as a group, have a separate setting. Obviously, that didn't quite work out last year. Yes, I think that's great. And that's also good for, like, uh, MILB games. I know many of you guys who have attended the Central Region Umpire School or worked our Central Region Tournament, uh, one of the things that we always used to do was try and go to see the uh, AAA team play in Indy uh, together, and that was kind of a bonding experience there. So that's a great idea, George. I'm glad you shared that one, too. Now, to, uh, to, uh, some, something uh, – sorry. Something that, uh, that you know, we also need to keep in mind is that whatever we end up doing in terms of uh, rewards and, and stuff like that, we need to plaster it all over social media. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, whatever, because that's a, uh, then that, uh, that person will then turn around and, and share it all over the place. And it'll just, uh, it'll, it'll get out and hopefully build interest. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, in the college at realm of athletics, I mean, we do that a ton. Uh, if any of you guys follow me on Twitter, um, you know, I, I put out a ton of stuff there. That's basically the retweets. We just had a new locker room update, for example, uh, players of the week, for example, all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Definitely shows here that the, that there is a program, there is a structure and not only are people proud to uh, have achievements there and they'll retweet that one or repost it, but at the same time, uh, you know, people will find that very attractive and want to be part of something there too. So that's a great point with that usage of social media, not only to recognize and reward those people, but also then use it in turn to kind of show off your program and, and then use it as a recruiting tool too. And I think that's a great point. Stu, before we, uh, George's point about NCAA, and MLB games, minor league games, stuff like that, why not organize a trip to central region? to show them what our pinnacle is. Mm -hmm. So just kind of keeping that in mind, organize a, organize a trip to watch the regional and say, this is where, this is where you could be. Yeah. Going to, going to central region to watch either the baseball or the softball majors tournament is fantastic. Exactly. It's easy to do. Uh, sometimes you can plan it over a weekend. You can get, you can share the cost of rooms. Uh, there's even one year I took three guys. We all decided on a lark to go up to Williamsport and watch that one. Mm -hmm. And th those are great ways to do some bonding, particularly if you're in a 14 hour car ride. <laughs> yeah, I think those are great. And uh, I think um, what I'm probably most proud of in this conversation is we definitely started with transactional strategies because I kind of made sure that we got there. And if you take a look at the T chart, the list on the, on the screen, significant more ideas here for transformational strategies rather than transactional strategies. And again, transactional are necessary because we do need that help, that support to get our, our grassroots program up. And those are tokens of appreciation, but it's the relationship and the meaning behind all those that means that, that, that keeps people. And that's the transformational strategy. Now, the mm, other part, Stuart, yep, go ahead. I'm sorry. Right. Number one reason I lose younger umpires is due to the actions of the so-called adult coaching. Mm -hmm. So as leaders of our respective groups, we need to be supportive to them, you know, tell them about our experiences and how we dealt with those kinds of coaches that, and we also also need to communicate with the various leagues that this type of behavior is unacceptable and they need to take care of their so-called adults in, in this scenario. So we don't continue to lose younger umpires and they want to stay and be involved and they want to have fun. I mean, that's the big thing I tell my new umpires, have a good time out there. Have fun. You're part of a great sport that you played and now you can be an, an official in, you know, and it, but the moment it stops being fun and they feel like they're being 
you know, the, the coaches are just constantly on them because they are going to make mistakes and the coaches need to understand that these are younger kids. They're going to make mistakes. You don't need to ride them the entire game because of a mistake made because you didn't agree with a strike call in the first period in the first inning. So again, it's having that kind of leadership within your group and with the leagues and getting that kind of understanding so we can retain these young run players and they can continue to grow. Yeah. Another, another fantastic point, Rob. I appreciate you, you stepping in and sharing that. Absolutely. And I think that support network uh, and, a, and a lack of support, when you think about whatever, whatever job, whatever relationship you may be in, if there's no support, there's no trust, that relationship, that job never lasts. Uh, so that's a, that's a fantastic point. Another great one to put, especially in that transformational strategies column. To Rob's point, there also needs to be real and tangible uh, uh, penalties uh, for bad behavior of coaches and fans. Uh, uh, too often, we've all seen it of you know of oh they're you know they're they're fine they'll you know they'll get over it uh, you know they'll they'll leave the the umpire alone eventually that kind of thing. There needs to be you know we need to have some kind of you know real and, and tangible penalty for this. Yeah. And, and um, we, Rob, why don't you mention what you've done or how we've handled it in times here with just sit both teams until that parent has been removed. I mean, it gets a point real quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've had to deal with leagues on expanding the one game suspension. If the, the adult coach has gone after the younger umpire in a parking lot after the game as well, you know, I've had to have those discussions with league officials to say, look, we can't have these adults chasing around these kids after the game. Um, it's a kid's game. Let's keep it in perspective. So there's, there's been times I've had to, you know, have those discussions with the various leagues and, and get them to understand that this type of behavior is not acceptable. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's, that's our job, right. As the leader of, of, of umpires and of that organization to make sure then that not only are we being supportive, uh, but at the same time that the league is also then backing up that support too. And I think that's a huge point, a uh, huge point. So hopefully, uh, you know, presidents uh, can, can be tough at some times. They can be great at others. Uh, but, you know, we need that league support just as much as those as our umpires need uh, support from us too, uh, as, as UICs and things like that. Now, I do want to uh, kind of talk about the second topic, and that is developing talent. And a lot of the stuff that we put on the screen and talked about so far is great. But at the same time, it is kind of more some of that feel good stuff. And at the same time, that, that stuff is all important because that's what connects people and keeps us there. Uh, but secondly, it's also important for us to know here that people want to be challenged and they want to see growth too. So when we talk about developing talent, how are we challenging individuals and how can we use basically evaluation as a strategy and as a tool, not only to develop our talent, but to also develop the rate relationship that's there too. Uh, so the last kind of point that I'll add here into the in, uh, transformational part of it too, of retaining and, re and developing talent is that idea of evaluation. Now, some of us and many of us probably have their, our own ideas uh, as to what exactly to use in an evaluation form. I've, I've dropped this one in the, in the chat for you guys to go ahead and use as well. Um, but this is one that I used to use at a local league that I was a UIC with. Um, and um, if, if any of you guys have worked a, a regional in 2019, this is probably looks a little familiar here to you because it eventually then started to grow and morph in, in, into what uh, we, we're using now at the regional and, and, and World Series levels here too. Uh, but nonetheless, you're just a, a very simple um, uh, you know, scale that's up there for us at the local levels here, kind of just basically trying to quantify what we expect at each level. I think someone talked about advancing through each levels and those promotions there. Um, and then just, you know, things that you value most. Okay. So you got to think about what you value most and place that then on the evaluation. And that's both on and off the field type of things there too. Uh, you've got pregame conference ideas, just generally being able to show up reliability ideas here too. Uh, and then there's some of the mechanics pieces too, one through five on those scales as well. Um, and then you can kind of see just, you know, their basic evaluative um, strategies that are there. Now, I think a, a, a concept that we've got to at least keep in mind here is that we as umpires and chiefs or, or individuals that are in positions of leadership probably need to step away from being on the field uh, if we can for number's sake and rather think of ourselves as a coach. And that's our job here. And, you know, I think one of the things that we've got to do here is, is continue to evaluate our umpires 
But at the same time, sit down and have this conversation with them and use this more as a, more of a, as a formative piece uh, rather than like a summative, like this is where you're at and that's it type of deal. So it needs to be a conversation of what exactly to work on and what exactly to get better at. And I found that this form was quick and easy for me to use. I passed it along to my assistant UICs that I had in my district and, and in my uh, umpire programs as well. And they would do the same too. And then ultimately here, I tried to breed uh, each other, each, each umpire having this conversation as well from this document too. Uh, so in their, in their post games, you try and get that lateral leadership concept where you have umpires coaching each other there once they reach a certain level of competence and comfortability, obviously there too. Uh, so that was uh, one form here that I just wanted to share with everybody. And again, I linked that one in the chat there for you. Uh, two. Uh, as I said, it kind of morphed into the uh, Little League uh, umpire evaluation form. This was new in 2019. Uh, for anyone that's worked at regional there, you probably got something that looked a lot like this. Same idea, same thing of what was valued, professionalism, uh, preparation in conferences, uh, field presence, plate mechanics, and everything else on down the list here. And again, same uh, talking about the level of recommendation, the, the, the um, you know, the ratings there, marginal develop, uh, effective and proficient, all there for you as well. Uh, but generally a, a way to communicate, number one, where an umpire is at that point. And then secondly, also outlining a path to go somewhere else into the future. Okay? And I think that's the most important thing with evaluation. And that's how we make sure that we keep people uh, in, in our organizations. There can't be a moving of the goalpost, so to speak, uh, but there has to be a clear path for them to achieve uh, certain levels and certain uh, opportunities uh, within the organization and obviously then in different tournaments and different levels and divisions of play and things like that. And evaluation then is our meritocracy. And that's what we have to use uh, to not only help develop our umpires and clinics and schools can obviously do that too, but this is a huge piece in relationship building because this then brings a conversation uh, with, with many people as well. And I want us to kind of see that uh, idea of evaluation as a, a, a relationship building piece rather than just like a grade as to this is where you're at or this is how good you are. No, it's what you are, are doing now and what you're capable of, what your potential is in the future. Um, talked about uh, creating different opportunities for umpires along the way. Uh, I talked about like uh, promoting people in the organization. Uh, one of the things that we did in District 8 here in Ohio uh, was that we wanted to make sure that we outlined a path of advancement for people. Uh, so we put out pl uh, plain and simple what exactly the steps were uh, to go ahead and um, to, to reach a level that they wanted to have. Uh, and we put this right out there in our umpire manual. So number one, you had to be appointed to district staff had to receive district staff assignments there, number two. Number three, you get sectional or state assignments there, a process that went by around that too. Uh, but again, I think the biggest thing for us to realize here in a lot of these, uh, and there's a quantifying score there, meritocracy at 4.7. But again, it, it is a, a clear thing for people to work towards and accomplish uh, and for you to, uh, the, 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 the leader and the umpire, to work together towards accomplishing these things. And I think if they can see it and it can be tangible, we can probably keep those umpires and continue to get them to invest in their own development and, and, and all that development stuff in, in general as well. Um, so just a couple of their documents that I wanted to at least go ahead and share with you. I think I linked in the chat some ideas uh, about a crew chief model, too, where we promoted people to lead crews uh, during our district tournament. Um, so those are all some, some major ideas here with the valuation and strategy there that I just wanted to sh share with you. And I think so much of the time that we think about um, uh, of evaluation, um, again, we think it as, as an endpoint, and it can't be an endpoint. Evaluation has to be basically a communication of this is where this person is right now, and this is how we're going to get to someplace else in the future. And I think that's going to have to uh, be a large part in what allows us to keep people and then also making sure that they know what's out there for them to achieve. And I think that would probably be at least one of the different many ways out there because there's a ton of them out there to try and keep then people uh, and continue to develop talent. Um, now, we have kind of reached uh, the, the maximum time here. I'm not going to go ahead and um, stop uh, the, the meeting, but I am going to go ahead and stop the recording. Uh, so for those of you guys here that are a half hour and, and that's what you can go ahead and contribute, uh, um, just kind of remember here those three announcements that I had at the start of, of, of the day here today. Number one, take a look at umpire registry stuff, as Tom mentioned. Those clinics are available there for you to go ahead and register for. Secondly, West Coast Umpire Camps is doing a, a great clinic this weekend. Go ahead and register for that one. That link's in the chat. And then lastly, then three up, three down. We'll take a brief break, but we'll come back in February for rule study as well. Other than that, that'll go ahead and wrap things up here for us in our conversation today on retaining 
and developing umpires. We'll move towards rule study in our next season coming up in February. However, if you guys want to hold on, uh, I'm, I'm open for conversation hereafter, uh, and I'll continue to stay on the line to, to hang out and talk more here about evaluation, about developing umpires, and ultimately then uh, retaining them as well. Appreciate everybody's participation this season and looking forward to next season here, uh, specifically then taking a look at um, the rule study and really continuing to get ready for the upcoming season. Thanks for being here. And again, we'll hold on here for further discussion.